if you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host Sheila Mack and I have a special Happy New Year announcement for you. That's right, just for beautiful, authentic you. So in this new year, I am personally plugging in all my 2022 up-leveling routines. That's right, I'm not doing goals or as much to say as I'm not just doing a resolution that I talk about or just write it down on a list. I'm actually already scheduling in the small acts that I need to do each day that are actually going to bring me results over this 365, I guess, or less now, uh, when you're listening in 363 to whatever it is, days. So at any rate, one of the things that I would like to introduce is that we will be having some talks on business and investing. That's right, business and investing reboots this year. So if you are looking to do a side gig or you have a business yourself or you're in a career and you are looking to earn some extra money, I have some tips and different things that my family, I have six grown children, we will all be participating in some of these and trying them out and sharing opportunities with you. And then We will also be talking uh, about real estate investing, which is something that I have done since I was very young. So my real estate investing experience comes from, well, when I was 18 and a half years old, I bought my first little triplex. (laughs) I was already working at Jet Propulsion Lab in JPL, JPL in Pasadena, California where we have the famous Rose Bowl every year right near there. And so I saved up my money and bought this little triplex. It was very humble kind of fixer thing. And (laughs) I lived in the back teeny tiny unit and rented out the best parts to everyone else. I guess I was house hacking before that was a term. And I continued to save up and invest. I was very creative on my financing, still going to school and working. So, you know, from that to investing in many different properties, I started gift stores at 23 and the first one I leased at 5,000 a month. And I said, wait a minute, you know, that's a lot of money to be giving to somebody, the landlord every single month. And my mortgage, if I can save up enough to put down, I can get into a mortgage. And you know what? With business credit, which I will be sharing all about, I did just that. And business credit is a magical secret. So if you don't have a side gig, that's why that first part is important with your investing is to have that extra income or side gig, have an LLC or an S Corp. So setting that up at 23 when I started my gift stores, by the end of the first year, I had more buying power than most people. I had a corporation's buying power. Like they would give me credit. You can't believe I could just walk into any dealership and they'd have these specials. I'd get the best credit, like zero interest. I'd, I'd be able to negotiate the deals on things, you know, different vans or whatever I needed for the store. And it was just incredible. And I actually used the business credit to purchase some of the properties. One was the headquarters and rental property. And so I had some mixed use and I actually purchased the other four buildings and stopped leasing and just became an owner. Uh, And so I got into real estate and investing from that, from being an investor and then later as other store owners were really interested in, and wondered, wait a minute, you're half my age, they would say. <laughs> and how are you buying buildings? What is going on? And so with that, I went ahead and I got my real estate license and started sharing about that. Worked at a small um, owned brokerage. And then from there, um, helped and led some real estate courses for real estate agents on 1031 exchange and have done multiple 1031 exchanges and helped many 
small business owners and families to invest in property. So I'll be sharing about my journey and how this year, even if you think, you, you know, this sounds like, how is this possible? I'm gonna help you figure out if that's something you're interested in, ways that you can make it become a real possibility for 2022 moving forward. So I hope you tune into my show. There will be some upgrades. We will still be doing lots of incredible interviews with amazing people sharing about resources and reboots and ways they got back on track and hearing their stories. And also we will be getting step-to-step -step challenges and ways for you to tune in, call in, and ask questions and be guided to actually make 2022 a wonderful time for your business and your personal life. All right, so stay tuned. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Max new number one bestseller boot straps and bra straps it contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation especially right now if life has knocked you down pick yourself up with boot straps and bra straps get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Connie Osterholt. Connie it has been leveraging over 25 years working directly with women business leaders in 17 countries. She has synthesized her experience as a senior executive, a strategy coach and mentor to high net worth business women in 10 plus industries, public private board members and successful entrepreneurs. She has been successfully focused on the power of the feminine and masculine energy in negotiations, networks and the nuanced areas of business and leadership knowing how and where to find what's really going on and help them going to the core of what's holding them back and in easy ways to turn it around. All right, welcome to the show, Connie. Thank you, happy to be here. It took a while, but here we are. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, and this show actually showed up based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And now over the last 13 or so months, we have globally experienced unimaginable situations. <laughs> so I like to start off each show by asking if you have a time that you could share about to the audience in your business or personal life where you experienced a tough situation and how you got back on track. I can name several, but let me start with the one that it is quite a while ago, but it's one of the toughest. And I know uh, many people can relate, Sheila, and that was the the when my baby daughter um you know when she was about to be born there were a couple of doctors present gynecologists and they made one wrong decision after another i mean in the moment they thought they were doing good but in hindsight it was one wrong decision after the other which ended in the fact that my daughter only although she was a healthy baby only lived for a couple of hours oh. so that was tough mm -hmm. and i think 
it's a long time ago, so I can talk about it, right? It, it wasn't easy for a while because I was always crying, but it's a long time ago. And I think that on my own, I might have never gotten over it, really. I mean, with time, it gets a little bit dimmer and it gets more manageable. But what I really, and it took me a while to get there, because you go through all the stages, right, of grief. You know that. You're angry. You're in denial, right? You're bargaining and, and all of that. And then there's finally acceptance. And there were two things that, that really, really were hard for me. One, of course, was not having my daughter with me on this earth, but mm -hmm. also how people reacted to it. Mm -hmm. And the best reaction was, well, you're young, you get another baby. Wow. And it's horrible, right? Because, you know, this baby, this daughter of mine was not there. And then there was a whole way of people crossing the street when they saw me coming and so-called friends not even reacting, right? So that was hard at the time. Since then, I learned that people really don't know how to deal with grief. They don't know. So they kind of stuck and they... they avoid you or don't say anything or say the wrong thing and you know they really don't know and it took me quite a while to find ways of making sense to all of this mm -hmm. and actually it was through personal development that i discovered that it was not my fault because it's the first one you go to right the if only game if only i would have right and that would never work of course but that i wasn't to blame that was one thing and did i that i didn't need to suffer and that i could be myself because what do you do when your child dies is you put them on a brave mask mm -hmm. society a six week that's about it you can mourn for six weeks and then get on with it they don't say it like that but it was the general feeling right so you put on a mask and a mask and a mask i'm good i'm doing good so it's um, discovery that I'm not guilty, that I can live myself, that I can make sense of it, and most importantly, mm -hmm. that I can choose my emotions. Yeah. So it's not that I put my emotions aside and say, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I don't care what happened, of course not. Yeah. I mean, it hurts, it hurts deeply. Mm -hmm. And But to know that I too can have a normal life and I don't have to constantly live in the past and I now know and it sounds a little bit esoteric I know that my daughter's energy is still around me you know and there there was a purpose to it and um, I didn't want to acknowledge that for a long time mm -hmm. but my point is that and, and that is uh, linking into your show I think is that you can choose your emotions yes and we have all the emotions in the world the good the bad the ugly and we will experience all of them, but we can choose to spend very little time in the emotions that don't work for you. Mm -hmm. Spend the most time in the emotions that would serve you, that help you make your life more happy, fulfilled, make your business more good. And I think that's the core of it in business, in times like we had last year. It was tough for many, many people, many different mm -hmm. fronts to choose your emotions. It's okay to have, and like, you know, when something small happens, it's okay to be, you know, whatever, peeve for five minutes, right? When something more serious happens, of course, you take more time. But make sure that you live your life as happy and fulfilled and successful as possible. And that goes hand in hand with the emotional state you live in. Mm, that's beautiful. And that's so true. And I have interviewed many people who have lost a child. Um, and I also lost my youngest son, Michael, who had a yeah. heart condition. So yeah. we actually almost lost him in fifth grade. And then we got to keep him extra years and he passed yeah. away last year at 22. Yeah. And we, as a family, oh my gosh, you know, I was had to model, how do we express our emotions without letting the emotions take over every part of our life? Yeah. And we did all the counseling and worked and discussions. And it was, thank goodness, for so much personal development training. Like my son was my daughter's best friend. Yeah. She, she yeah. did the training with um, Chloe Madonna's, the mentorship program that, 
that Chloe had, my yeah. daughter and I went together and she's studying psychology. So we had some discussions, psychological, it would be three o'clock in the morning, mom, I can't sleep, let's talk all night. And right. that's what we did. And there were those friends and people for her and for myself and for my other kids that that were not understanding or didn't know what to do or what to say or showed up in a weird way that felt different. Yeah. And it was, we had a lot of talks about that. As, right. Because if they haven't walked or they haven't experienced that, they can't even fathom it, then it's hard for them to know what do you say or do or how do you feel? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's not a personal thing. Yeah. And the more we can talk about going through these things openly, the easier it is for other people. And this last year, I think we've all had grief in so many ways, grief, yeah. the way the world was, the way the world is, uh, maybe changing jobs or uh, some people got divorced, some people got married. <laughs> you know, because, exactly. Yeah. So um, some people cool. had the best time in their life and others were really deeply struggling. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to realize what matters most, I think that's what this universal pause really taught my family. And, and I was just does it matter? What really matters? Love, family, friends, community. Yeah. yeah. We can always do something else for work. It's all good. But what yeah. really matters is those things. If you don't have those, what are you working for? If yeah. you're not working to serve the community and you can serve in any way, then it doesn't really matter. So absolutely. Yeah. 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 It makes me think of, if I may, it makes me think of like I had many years, no, not that long ago, but 10 years ago, a monk in my house mm. of like an Indian like uh, movement that promoted oneness. Everybody is the same and they need everything. Everybody is the same. And I had some people who were not experienced in, in spirituality or being around monks or whatnot. And one of them said, what is the purpose of life? Huge question, right? And um, the purpose of life, he had to think about it. And then he said, the purpose of life is to be happy. Mm. So, and I was going, well, is that shallow? Is that superficial? No, we can really be happy, but it doesn't always come easy. Right. And if you sit and wait till the outside world is providing you with happiness, sometimes it works, but most of the time it doesn't. Mm -hmm. so, and I love what you said about despite everything that, that people went through, you know, and, and a lot was happening. It's like finding those moments, finding the people and finding the experiences that are meaningful and fulfilling. So it makes you happy and friends and family. Yes, absolutely. Love in many, many forms. That's what it's about. Yes. And I know that for me, I had so many people that said, okay, you'll get into a relationship and then you'll be happy or uh -huh. you'll have this house or that place or whatever, yeah. XYZ, yeah. and you're going to be happy. And I was like, wait a minute, I already am happy. And, and as I got more and more happy with my own life and where I was at and found happiness in the little things and the big things that showed up, more happy people, places, and things showed up for me. Right. And it wasn't, my happiness isn't going to depend on those outside circumstances. Yes, you're going to grieve the loss of a loved one. Yes, you're going to go through. I mean, this is normal to go through a grieving over this last year. Yeah. But when you own your happiness, you're empowered. Nobody gets to be over you on that. Yeah. Person, place, or thing. You own that. Absolutely. And when you make that your core, no matter what happens, big small things you will always come back to that core mm -hmm. and that is i think what's most important because from that place like you said too you attract instead of like resisting things or not recognize or acknowledge opportunities mm -hmm. and in, in friends and love and business you know it's, it's attracting likewise right you're attracting happy people as well That's and exactly. you can pick and choose it's it's abundance Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, is for a lot of people, not everybody, because you and I are blessed to be in, in a social network of people that done a lot of work on themselves. And, you know, they, they are able to overcome 
negativity, overcome resistance, overcome the things that are taken away. They, they are not all, but most of them are very good at it. But it's, um, like you said in the beginning, it, 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 you know, you can create new things, but you have to be in that state, that right state of mind. And no matter the COVID year, no matter where your business is, no matter where your relationship is, but when you come from that right state of mind, so the feelings, the emotions, the focus, then it's easier to attract and live in abundance. And abundance means something different for everybody. Yes. Yes. Imagine some people's definition of abundance is another person's hell. <laughs> it's like, I wouldn't want to do that. That's not fun at yeah. all. And yeah. so what, yeah. what you want and what I want and what somebody else wants is so different and it's all yeah. beautiful and okay. Absolutely. It's, yes. Yeah. yeah. That makes it easier. I would love to hear more about your coaching with women and some of the programs you do and the process and more about that. Yeah. So I have been officially in the business for 25 years. I don't know where the time went, but it's 25 years. And before that, I was doing kind of similar things, but I didn't put it under a name, right? And um, I have been very blessed to have coached, to have helped like thousands and thousands and thousands of people, either in a group or individual over the years. So you learn a couple of things, right? When you work with that many people. And how would I say that? Men and women are very different, or I should say feminine energy and masculine energy is very different, right? It doesn't matter where you are, but it matters where you are in your core. And if you think and you make it your reality that you cannot live from your core in business, mm -hmm. in life, you make it hard on yourself. So a very um, common thought or belief is that women in business need to be tough and need to be masculine in order to count. Mm -hmm. So because we are so different and Although we've done great work as, as women, we still came late to the game, right? We came to a man's world. It's been a while, but we still came to a man's world. So you expecting to be a man gives you trouble, but you expecting to be a man gives the men in your environment trouble too because they don't know how to deal with that. And there's a whole adaptation of how do you do that? You know, I'm a speaker as well. I have to speak differently than a man does. And people are used to a man speaking and he can have his hands in his pocket and, you know, and, and say anything. But as a woman, you have to display more care and more smiling and do it in a different way, in your own way. So I got intrigued by all of that, right? And even in the speaking world, where I was speaking, there was still that dichotomy that people said, oh, as a woman on stage, people will not listen to you. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, you know, the, the, when they have to choose between a woman and a man, they will always choose the man. So there were beliefs and thoughts that I didn't like. You know, and some of that might have been reality, but I never chose to accept that as a reality. So it's, I think it came from there. Now, probably it came from earlier on, way earlier on. I, I just didn't know how to label it yet. But it's, it's about who you are. Mm -hmm. And it's about your talents and your passion and your interest and your motivation and ideal would be when we live in a world where everybody can accept each other. It's not the case, right? You are blessed, but it's, it's not the case. But to know how to deal with situations and not fall into the trap of being somebody different than you really are mm -hmm. is an honor. And it's not being taught. So that's where I come in and, I, and I've helped many, many women, but also men understanding the women in their group and business, mm -hmm. how to bring out the best in each other and how to be cohesive and be a team and play your strengths. And that is just, I love that. Yes. I love that. 
Because you see, yeah, does that make sense? Yes, so beautiful and important. I, I, I was really blessed years ago as this young girl raised by a grandmother and she had all these other women that were neighbors where I, I grew up in her home for a little while and they would have tea. And in this tea, they would tell their stories. It was the heroic women that were very in their feminine. It was before things changed. Right. Yet, yet they were new to this world. They may have been the first women to own businesses or take over the husband's business because the husband passed away or whatever it was. And so that's what I grew up with. That Those women were my mentors. And that was normal. So a lot of times people would say, well, you're so feminine, Sheila, but how do you run a business? And it's like, yeah. that's the way I saw everybody, all the women that I was surrounded with, that's how they ran their business. Yeah. And they never tried to change to fit into the man's world because they, they use the femininity to bring that into the business and they were very successful. There you go. Well done. You know, everybody should grow up like that with, with the male role models and the female role, role models. That is fantastic. It's beautiful. But a lot of people are confused on how to deal with certain things. You know, at one point, and I have a product coming out on that, but at one point I started um, collecting pet griefs grievances right so your job what do you run into what is the thing you dislike and you got all these different questions are my um, co-workers think I'm a bitch right <laughs> um, my boss has an old boys uh, network and I'm never included uh -huh. right how can I not appear weak you know, how, how do I react when men say, honey, you get the coffee while they have a meeting, right? Stuff like that. <laughs> and we all know those examples. And I'm not pointing fingers as men because they need to educate too how to bring that into a team. But mm -hmm. I'm educating both how to deal with it. Because for a while, it seems that, you know, my mother's time, it, it was like my dad had the power. My mom was more submissive. Money was brought in by my dad. Mom was doing the household and the kids. So mm -hmm. it was very defined. And that definition, definition has gone. So it's kind of equal. But stay in equality is also not very exciting. It mm -hmm. can become bland. Yes. But to play your own strengths and to see how that fits in a team and how you can benefit from however who you are at your core is something that fascinates me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do a lot in coaching and, and mentoring, how to deal with it. Do you take it as an insult that, that people say, hey, can you get me my coffee? Or <laughs> you laugh about it and you say, okay, next time it's your turn. Right. Or, hey, I'm busy. I take it, but you were on milk. Thank you. Right? It, okay. It's You don't have to take it on like it's an insult. It's just what happens. And what's most important is how you react to it. That That is so true. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I'd like to give a special thank you and shout out to Change Toothpaste. That's at changetoothpaste.com, and it is toothpaste tablets just like paste, but without the waste. So let me tell you why I am making the switch over to change toothpaste. Now, this is kind of wild because I just found out about all this myself. So more than 900 million toothpaste tubes are entering our landfills and oceans every year on a global scale. Toothpaste tubes take over 500 years to break down and cannot be recycled. A fundamental change is required and it starts with you and it is starting with me. So their sustainable toothpaste tablet removes the need for a tube altogether. Packaged in compostable pouches, they reduce the environmental footprint while giving you a clean, fresh brushing without any harsh chemicals. Change toothpaste tablets help you make a small change 
that makes a big environmental impact. Now their mission started when they noticed the, how their kids show care for our planet and they wanted to do their part to reduce the global plastic waste problem to make sure that the environment is safe and healthy for generations to come. So together, we believe we can create a global movement to protect our beloved planet. You brush your teeth each and every day, obviously a few times a day. So once your toothpaste tube is finished, it's thrown into the garbage and you don't think about it. With change toothpaste, the tablets are just like paste without the waste, helping your teeth feel naturally fresh, clean, and prepared for anything that your day has in store. Thank you again, Change Toothpaste. And if you want to learn more about Change Toothpaste, you can go to changetoothpaste.com. Thank you again, Change toothpaste for being the sponsors of this episode and for listeners just wanting to try change toothpaste out you can use special code sheila capital letters s-h-e-i-l-a 20 to get a discount on your first order enjoy and uh, coming from the speaking world i did a, a one-year speaking tour a while back and when i did that it was very different for the men than the women as far as expectations. I mean, you have to have more makeup. You have to have everything. Yeah. You've got to be this. You've got to be that. Oh, my gosh. You know, don't eat too much. you got to be a certain. Everything had to be a certain way. And the standards for women versus men getting on stage were incredibly different. So it was like 2% yeah. of the population of speakers are women because of this craziness the guy come in you know not even do his hair a little, little belly showing and and, and a t-shirt and be like hey <laughs> I'm a yeah. and then people go okay tell me yeah. <laughs> yeah. but and then and then a woman it's like no you've got to be dressed perfectly and you could never just come in a t-shirt and right. so it's and I was like oh well it's no wonder and there's no time to, you have to do a lot of self-care to, you know, get everything, the, the hair done every other day and everything done right. So there was a lot of pressure in that I found that was like, wow, that's kind of overwhelming. And it's interesting because the judgment not only came from the men in the audience, but it would also come from the women equally. Yeah. or so. And so that's something that has changed somewhat. Now, this was, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago when I did that. And it's changed over time where people are, oh, like, that's yeah. refreshing. thank goodness. Okay. I can breathe too a little bit and it's more real now. Yeah. There's a, yeah. I don't know, there's a change in maybe the consciousness of the audience, let's just say, and, and what's acceptable or what's considered not reasonable. Yeah. And there's definitely, you said it so right, a change in, in the rules or, or the perception of the audience. Mm -hmm. So women are not, women are more supportive, I find. And women, women really applaud when there's another woman on stage. They go inwards like, yay, we have a woman there, right? Mm -hmm. But also men, they also change. Because if you stay authentically with who you are, how you are at your core, they will love that. Right. You know, when I first started, and I never wrote that book because people laughed at me in, in at that time. It was about the subject of flirting. And I say, well, flirting is not only like in an intimate or, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend kind of way, but you flirt with life. Mm -hmm. And if you look up the definition of flirting, it's banter, right? So when you... And I don't know if it sounds strange, but hear me out. If you, and it's you, you flirt with your audience, men, women, kids alike, then you bring that playful atmosphere to the stage, which is way more engaging. Yeah. So it's like flirt in your life, not necessarily with a sexual connotation, but just bantering and make each other happy. And it's, uh, it's way more fun to go through life like that but it all has to do how confident you are in your identity who you are at your core and how you can deal with people who think otherwise 
Mm, yes. And many times they become your greatest fans later because they're they're living in this box themselves. Yeah. The rules, the rule of I need to be this way and it's a yeah. little bit rigid. And then they're like, okay, there's somebody that's free. I want to do that too. How can I just be myself? Exactly. The other question, when people are doing this work, a lot of times people are trying to change. Maybe they have an addiction or they're getting out of an abusive situation and they have family and friends that are supporting them or trying to support them. What advice do you have for those people that are supporting a loved one who's working really hard to make a change and apply what they've learned? I think when it comes to family members or, or great friends, it's just love them. Mm -hmm. Love them through it. Keep on seeing who they really are. You love the person that they are. You might not condone their behavior, but keep on loving the person that they are inside. And maybe together, if they're open for it, decide what the best approach is by a professional. Yeah. And I think love and support is so important. And a lot of people do not know that. They think that they don't do nothing. But it's it's the most important you can do. Yes. And catching them doing right or having the big wins, which sometimes are the little wins. Sometimes, I mean, if they're going through something, it might be you got out of bed today. <laughs> That's a big win. <laughs> you, you know, whatever it is. Celebrating the big wins and having that loving patience yes. with a loved one when they run into that. Anyone you work with when you coach, they're going to have those times where they go back to the pattern and then awareness kicks in later. Yeah. And that's still a win because yeah. the awareness kicked in. It's just sure. it's a little it's step. Little time. It's yeah. a little step. And instead of beating yourself up, if you are the one doing the process or beating the loved one up, to catch the good parts. Yeah. I think that really makes a difference in getting to the other yeah. side of it and knowing yeah. it's going to, it's going to, triggers are going to show up and then it might be that it's less of a trigger or you're aware and you can do something different. Exactly. Yes. And of course it, it's sometimes not easy when people are seriously addicted. Mm -hmm. You need to have professional help and mm -hmm. you need to really be careful who you hire, right? Mm -hmm. And where you send your people, but also to realize that you might not be the person to give them that help. Yeah. Because exactly. often that help is based on tough love. Mm -hmm. And when you love somebody, it's hard to do the tough love, right? In, in many ways we can, but in huge ways we cannot. So it's, it's accepting that your job is just to love them for who they are. It makes it easier to say, well, this is beyond my scope. I need professional help. I think that's the beauty. I point this out to a lot of people where it's like, you think of a, a pastor, a priest, a rabbi, someone that's guiding someone, and they have a community of hundreds of people, and they always give advice and help people. But many times they have to refer out to a specialist for certain things. Yeah. And that is to know when you can support someone as much as you can and when you need to refer out. And that's just so much easier to know you're doing your best. Yeah. And to get your own coach or help to help you in the ways that you can help work on you and yeah. support whoever that loved one is in your life that you want to help out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it's... When you go to bed at night and you say, I've done the best I could mm -hmm. with everything I know, with everything I learned, then that's a good day. But be realistic because addiction, you cannot solve the problem for them. Mm -hmm. And it's there's a reason they're addicted. There's a, I call it escapism. There's a reason for it. And, you know, they need to go deep inside when they want to find it and then have a more healthy coping mechanism with whatever is going on. And um, it's a tough subject. It is. It's a tough subject, but also, and that sounds... Well, I, I say a lot of things that sound maybe strange, but it's not let it let your guilt become your crutch. Mm -hmm. It's people feel I met somebody and his son 
died of an overdose and that was mm. seven years ago mm. and i'm not saying that after seven years it's any easier but what was really horrible for him that he was holding on to that image that he could have saved his son mm. And I think as a parent, and, and you must know that, right? As a parent, that's kind of your job, right? To protect your kids and to, to make sure they have the best life possible. But it's, if you can honestly say to yourself, I've done everything I could. Mm -hmm. There is a bigger something out there, however name you give it, that is sometimes has a different outcome for things and the outcome we do not like. Right. But, you know, we are not playing God or playing the almighty universe or Buddha or whatnot, mm -hmm. right? It's you need to do your utmost, your best that you can possibly do. Love at your best. And when that's not enough, seek professional help. And when that's not enough, then there's a whole other spiritual discussion and um, I, I just want to mention one book that really, really helped me, and that is uh, Sacred Souls. Mm. So it's um, under the header of that souls, you know, are somewhere. And then when a kid or a child gets born, there is a contract attached to it. So the contract comes and says that this kid is going to be a child of divorced parents and, you know, and there's abandonment issues and blah, 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 right? And then one of the souls go, okay, I can handle that. Wow. And that might be for a long time. That might be for a short time. And, and that's kind of the law of the universe. And we human beings cannot really influence that. Mm -hmm. So it's the way how I started making sense of what, what happened to my baby girl. Yeah. You know, there is a reason, there's a bigger reason. I might not know it, I might never know it, but there must be a bigger reason. Yes, yes, I totally agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And a connection that continues. Like you said, your daughter's with you, my son's with me. That that connection we feel, signs yeah. that show up. And yeah. scientifically, when you when you look at anyone that's crossing over, they're already talking to people on the other side before they Absolutely. leave their body. Yeah, absolutely. Any any country on the planet, they have the same experience. There's there's a connection between science and spirituality that we're just now figuring out. Yeah. And, and that's to surrender. Sometimes we have to surrender to what is and do our best and then be guided and listen to what our next action is. And sometimes yeah. those baby yeah. steps that get us out and on yeah. track. Yeah, I agree. And and by no means, I mean, well, something bad happens and you go, oh, well, and then move on. That's not how it works. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, to, um, I think, love people, period. Mm -hmm. Even when they go through really bad times, just love them and seek guidance, seek counseling, seek professionals in however way you can it doesn't always work either mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's to do your best and know you've done your best and your utmost i think that's all we can do as human beings yes now i would love for you to share if someone was to come to you to start um on one of these journeys with you for getting into the masculine and feminine and really finding their authentic truth what what do they need to do how do they connect with you what what does the process look like Right. So connect with me through social media or through my website or through my phone number. I don't know if you have that available somewhere. And otherwise, I hope you, you publish it. And just then we will have a conversation about what you need and if we are a good match. Okay. So it's um, and, and I have, again, a program coming out about um, feminine business leaders so maybe that's a good fit. Maybe private coaching is a good fit. Maybe, you know, group coaching or, or seminar is a good fit. But let me help you. If you need help, let me help you. I've learned so much. I've studied so much. Mm -hmm. And I have certificates up to the wazoo because I always want to grow and learn new things that there's always a way to help you. 
Mm. And that is, is what I do. I love helping people and love to get them to an authentic, happy and fulfilled place. Beautiful. And now do you have a website for people to connect? Yeah. I, my website is Dr. Connie, D-R Connie. So D-R-C-O-N-N-I-E. Online, all one word, dot com. Okay. Wonderful. All right. If you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent rebuild and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I wanted to take a moment to reflect on one of my favorite authors and quotes. The quote is, create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once, whether you're ready or not to put this plan into action. And the author was Napoleon Hill. Now, my memory or my first meeting with Napoleon Hill was actually back when I was eight years old. And I did actually mention it in my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. This was such a changing point in my life. I was eight years old. I was living house to house. My family was not, my mother and father were were having health issues. They weren't really able to care for me full time. So I was sent from one relative's house to the other. Sometimes I was with the healthy grandparents. Sometimes I was with a group of grandparents that wasn't so healthy and there was a lot of abuse going on. And at this point, I was eight years old. I remember I was actually um, in a nice neighborhood. Unfortunately, the home had a lot of abuse going on. My mother was home with me for a short time and I had taken up some little part-time jobs helping out in the neighborhood. So I would literally, this is back in the day when, when this was, I guess, a normal thing, I would go help out with, with cutting the lawn or cleaning and, and, um, actually polishing furniture when people actually did that and I would go do that for the neighbors and get money and so I went with my hard-earned money and I went over to another neighbor's house who was having a garage sale and I found this incredible book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and at the time my little eight-year-old mind okay this is eight-year-old mind there was a lot of abuse and my mother wasn't financially able to or health wise able to help me she had polio as a child and she had some other issues going on and emotional things and so it was hard for her and in my mind I thought okay this book is going to do it because it is going to tell me how to think and grow rich and I really need to do that because I wanted to get my own house or apartment for my mother and I so that we wouldn't have to be moving around and and she would be in a safe place and I would be in a safe place and so I took this book home and I slept with the book I read the book Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich from cover to cover this little eight-year-old girl I read that book over and over again Um, for an entire year and I literally still have that original copy with me today I keep it on my nightstand by my bed and I still reread it from time to time and it has been such an incredible gift and I think that somehow it was something that the principles in there I took that to heart a lot of the principles in there and I I really lived by a lot of that and and the idea of creating a definite plan for carrying out your desire and beginning at once whether you're ready or not necessitated you need a guide to show you how we get through a situation like this to give you resources and to help you get out of the emotional pea soup fog of dealing with a crisis and the resulting fallout I've been there, and I'm here to help you. Out of the fog, 
If you weren't emotionally bound up in your situation, you would have more clarity. You would be able to see your best options for dealing with whatever comes up. If the version of yourself who has already walked through this rock bottom and come out the other end could go back in time and give you, the you right now, some advice, what would she say? Would she tell you to slow down, to stop rushing, that you don't have to have all the answers today? Would the future you recommend not making any major decisions without reviewing them first, particularly while you're still in the fog? Would she tell you that normal is going to look different for a while, but that you will feel normal again? In case we haven't invented time travel by the time you read this book, I'm here to tell you all of the above. I developed the Boots formula to help you learn to make choices have a life shift and make great things happen based on your individual values and best life vision. A change is gonna happen and it's worth it. There is a stage where it feels like everyone in your life is picking at you. Life itself may seem like it's trying its best to stop you from doing whatever you want to do. All you hear is, that's a stupid idea and that's never gonna work and who do you think you are? One of the hardest things for people to do is to realign and possibly walk away from anything and anyone that conflicts with their value systems. But you are going to discover that power within yourself. Through the activities and examples in this book, you will discover your true north and will be able to easily do what is needed to move forward with your life. Anything that hurts you, that doesn't resonate for you, that fights against what you want and believe in, you are going to give it the boot. Once you have turned your rock bottom moment into a positive, beautiful life shift, you can live your life on your terms. Your life will probably look different, but you get to design it this time. You are taking your life back and you are in charge, not anybody else. Sooner than you can imagine, You'll be in the career of your dreams or the relationship you always wanted. Because you are going to learn to develop healthy boundaries. Because you are going to do things differently along the way from here to there. You will begin to attract the people, the job, the place to live, all of the opportunities that align with who you are, your essence, your truth, not anybody else's or even society's expectations of the way you're supposed to be. Once you have accepted that you are in charge of living your life and you begin to embody living your truth, people are going to see you. They're going to be inspired by you. Then you're going to hear, hey, can you show me how you did that? I want to do it too. When you assess your peer group and up level according to your life purpose and vision, and once you have created a life shift for yourself, whatever that looks like, your life is not just full, it's fulfilled. Not only do you get more and better sleep, you wake up feeling rested and happy. You know that you're doing what you need to do. Yes. Sometimes your heart will call you to leave certain friends or family members in order to find a more aligned peer group. From what I've seen, however, the ones who leave always return to lead their family and friends to success. Because your friends are more in alignment with your beliefs and value system, they support you while also pushing you toward your personal best. Life still involves work, but as a whole, it feels far more effortless. But you don't have to wait for the right person, right job, or right investment opportunity to show up. You can start living now so that every moment as you go forward through the process of recovering from rock bottom and redesigning your life is one more step to being the best version of you. The one who came... All right, if you are looking to reinvent life on your terms, if you are grieving, experiencing financial turmoil, career shifts, relationship problems, parenting, elder care, victims of abuse, breaking free from an addiction, or seeking an overall business and lifestyle redesign, 
then you may need a reboot. Is not a size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. Tahibo Tea Club's original Pure Pouty Arco Super Tea helps you build the red corpuscles in the blood which can carry oxygen to our organs and cells. Our organs and cells need oxygen to regenerate themselves. The immune system needs oxygen to develop and cancer dies in oxygen. So the tea is great for healthy people and it can truly be miraculous for someone fighting a potentially life-threatening disease due to an infection, diabetes, or cancer. A one-pound package of tea is $34.95 plus shipping. To order, please visit lovemysupertea.com. That's love, L-O-V-E, my, M-Y, super, S-U-P-E-R, T, T-E-A, dot com. So the complete website is lovemysupertea.com. Or call 818-288-4128, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, California time. That's lovemysupertea.com at 818-288-4128. Honor to be a guest also recently on Carrie Roberts' Extraordinary Things podcast. And one of the things that we talked about was the word for the day. And this is what is your one word mantra that helps you to stay on track and focused even through these very interesting times? So here's my response to Carrie's question about the one word mantra. I like to ask all my guests, Sheila, is what is one word or quote or mantra that you try to live by every single day? That's the being. Uh, in all I'm doing, it's who I'm being. So whether I'm walking my puppies, cleaning my house, uh, working with my clients, having fun with family and friends, it's who I'm being, how I'm showing up that's going to make all the difference. I love it. Well, I, again, I congratulate you on your growth as a person, your ability to be perseverant and work hard, um, to live the life that you want, even when it comes at you unexpectedly and crazy and, uh, how you, how you're helping others to do the same. So thank you so much for sharing your story and I look forward to hearing more. All right. Thank you. Is not one size fits all. This is Sheila Mack. Thank you again for tuning in, and I have some homework for you. So go and get your copy of the new Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. It is now on Amazon, Audible, Kindle, and all major bookstores. And get ready to tune in daily as I share the Business Leader Reboot. So that is starting a business, side business, or extra income. I don't care if you're starting from zero, rebooting, starting over completely. We are going to go through the steps over this year slowly together to rebuild, reboot, and reinvent your business and personal life or your career and personal life on your terms. And I will also be sharing about investing, um, investing in properties and how to get some passive income going this year as well. So stay tuned.